Hi everyone, we're going to continue to discuss Excel formulas as related to Chapter 3. And we're going to continue using the workbook related to Chapter 3 and specifically the test score sheet. Okay, we're going to start again where, our, where we last left off with the last video. Okay, so again, we have our test results, 100 of them. We have our z-scores for each of them. We have all these statistic problems we just calculated in the last video. Okay, so let's do a couple of different things here quickly. So it says, what is the value, first quartal, quartile value? And we came up with a 62.25, all right? So what if I wanna know how many numbers are within the first quartile? Okay, so we can count them, of course. We covered that. I can count each of these numbers here, or I can write an Excel formula to do that. So let's do that. Let's try it. I'm gonna go here in cell D to nine, and I'm gonna do equals count if, that's my range, again, always A, comma, open parentheses, I mean, double parentheses, double quotes, less than, or less than what? I'm going to do cell E, no, less than what? Double quotes, I put an ampersand here, E9. So what's this cell? So let's, let's talk about this formula for a minute. What this formula is telling us is it's saying, hey, What's saying is, is I want you to count in column A, again, our data, any number that's less than, that's why we put less than, double quotes, E9. Well, it's E9, 62.25. So I can say that we have 25 test scores in the first quartile, okay? Let's talk about the third quartile. Well, that's, that's pretty easy. We'll just do, again, we'll do the, I'm just going to control C, control B. I have this number, but I'm going to have to change this to say um, greater than greater than the the cell number E10. That's 25 as well. So there's 25 numbers in the first quartile and 25 numbers in the third quartile. Right? So that's how you write that formula to check a, a value as referenced in the cell. As you can see by now, we have 25 numbers. So let's take a look at this. Let's go 62.25. There we go, 25 numbers. Let's see, 86.75. 25 numbers right here, All right? So that's, so that's how you can write a count if statement that, that compares a value instead of a hard-coded value, which is what we did over here. We had greater than 80 here for question number nine in cell E11. This is the way you can do it if you want to look, reference another cell, okay? Let's do a couple of quick charts. So again, I'm going to click on my data range. I'm going to click on the tab insert. I'm going to click this icon here, this recommended charts. And I'm going to go down here and select this chart here, the histogram. I'm just going to do OK. And here you go. Here's the histogram that shows us how many, I'll right click on this, and I'll add my data labels, and we'll, we'll analyze this for a moment. Ah, there we go. So saying, hey, 25 numbers, we just kind of covered this, are less than, are in the 51 to 62 range, 17 numbers are in 62 to 73, 32 numbers are between 73 and 84, 84 to 95, and then 95 says 106, but we know it's 100. So what this is doing is it's breaking out our data into five different sections, if you would, and that's kind of a standard, five different sections for Instagram, and how many values fall within these sections, okay? All right. So we can see it's not a perfect bell curve, more numbers over here on the left than the right here, so kind of skewed to the right, we say, because I like to say the holes here on the right, so it's skewed to the right. It's not symmetric, okay? There's more values, less than the middle point, we'll see it's in 32 here, right here is where our mean is. There's more numbers here um, than over here, all right? More test scores fall below the mean than above the mean, all right? Let's have one more chart here. Again, I'm gonna select my A here, data. I'm gonna go insert. This is when we click on recommended charts, and I'm going to look at all charts in box and whisker. Insert that one. And again, I could just drag the, the image or the chart, if you would, and 
we'll, we'll drag it down here, we'll analyze it. Okay, so what does this show us? This shows us that, hey, this is your highest score is 100. Your lowest score is a, my mouse over it should, yeah, 51, there we go. All right, hard to see. There we go, 51. If I look at the box, we have a test results value 75.05, so that's our mean. And right here should be our 86.75, which is our third quartile high value. And right here is our 62.25. That's our first quartile value. Okay, so that's a box called a box, box and whisker chart. Right? Okay, let's do one more thing to our data here. Let's say the dean's office calls us and says, hey, great sample, add 25 more numbers. All right, all right, very well. So what do we do? So you give us the 25 numbers here. We'll go ahead and copy the test scores here. I'm going to paste it here. Right click, I'm going to paste the values. I do a couple of things here. We're going to analyze the data one more time. Control C, copy our Z score, if you would. Down. So now we have 125 numbers. But again, I, want, I like to, uh, like I said earlier, I mentioned earlier, I like to organize, sort the data. So I'm also and I'm gonna continue with my current section. Okay, so now what happened? Let's, let's look at our numbers here. All right, so let's review it. How many students are in the sample? 125, we just added 25 more. Our average, average change is 75.78. Went up, mean score went up, 77. Score received one, 79. Highest score still 100, most score still 51. But look what happened here. First quartile moved to a 63. Third quarter, I looked at 88, and there's 29 values in each of them, okay? Um, our standard deviation changed to 14.18. How many students received a score greater than 80? 50 students received a score greater than 80. Um, let's look at our Z-score for 86. Remember, we hard-coded this in. Let's see, what is it, 80, 86. Let's find it. It is a 0.72. 0.7200. So that changed, that changed because again, why? Because my mean changed and my standard deviation changed. So that obviously changed. And let's answer this question. Would it be fair to give every single with one standard deviation of B? So let's see, one with a B. So one standard deviation with a B is, let's see here, we're going to go over at uh, 75.78. Let's move this guy here. 75.78. So we're going to go one standard deviation above and below. Above. Right here. We're going to go below the negative one. So right about here. So let's see what happened now. What happened now? So if I go above, my highest test score is now on 89. Go below the mean, highest test score is a 60, lowest test score is a 62. So again, we have a 62 versus an 89. So I would keep the answer of no, meaning no, I would not give someone who got a 62 a B as well as someone who got an 89 a B. This wouldn't be right, it wouldn't be fair. So now let's look at our data. Let's look at this chart really quick. The numbers change. Again, it dynamically changed. The chart dynamically changed. Look what happened here. More students that we had, the 25 more students, they got higher test scores than the, than, the, than the mean here, okay? And then here we saw the lower group here. So it seems like it's a little bit more kind of symmetric. Now it looks like it's kind of skewed to the left now because it's more less values over here and more over here. So um, our bot, bots and whiskers chart changed here. Our numbers changed here to match these numbers here accordingly. So this is some, just some more advanced features with Excel using the same data, some more advanced formulas. And more importantly, I wanted to point out how when I add more values, the numbers dynamically change. So by using these cell references, I can add another 100 scores or 200 scores or 500 scores or whatever. 
And what happens is the numbers automatically change for you, okay? Again, except for this one here, because we're asking for a specific z-score for a specific value, okay? So, okay, and that concludes this video.